Hey, what's up, people? Welcome back to another episode in which I'm going to show you how to clean, how to debone, and how to cook a Great Lake salmon. But first, we have to go catch a couple. I'm Kyle McClellan, this is Adventure Chasing, and you are riding shotgun, baby. All right guys, well we're getting out a little bit of cut bait here. So this is strips of herring. We're gonna take a strip of herring here and I'm gonna show you how we rig this up. So this is a meat head and how this works, let me take the pin out. How this works is this strip of cut bait goes right in this meat head like this. And then I'm gonna take this little pin, which is right here, thread it through the meat and then bend the back. And this is just gonna be twirling down there and we're gonna have a whole bunch of teasers and we're gonna put it behind a flasher. Now this flasher is gonna be rotating, kicking up all kinds of turbulence. This flasher represents a feeding fish. Then we have the bait behind the flasher and that is gonna be a rig to catch a big salmon. Here we go, here we go, baby, here we go, Jim. Here we go, buddy, here we go, baby. <laughs> Jim, get a screamer, buddy. I'm gonna get the drag set for you, buddy. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Let's just let him roll for a second. Oh my goodness. Hold on, Jim. Hold on. Hold on to rock tight, Jim. Okay. I'm going to get him right to you, buddy. Oh my gosh. He's burning my thumb. <laughs> Look at this thing, guys. This is absolute pandemonium, baby. <laughs> okay, Jim. Hold on to him, buddy. That is a screamer. That is what we're looking for, guys. It can't even see yet. It's so dark, and we've already had two good bites. Oh, diver, 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 Jim. Oh my God. Here we go, guys. Here we go, baby. Doubled up, doubled up. <laughs> here we go. It's getting real now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm seeing my thing. Okay, okay, I got it. Just hold what you got, Jim, for a second. Okay. This fish is just you going. Take this one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, here. I'll switch you, Jim. Okay. Absolutely perfect. Okay. You got him? Yep. Okay, it's it's a big, it's a nice one. Okay. Time for a little hand line action here. A little hand line. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's running, he's running. He's running. Okay, here we go. Now. There we go, baby. Nice king in the box. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go, buddy. There we go, buddy. Okay, we got one. Jim still got one on here, guys. All right, all right. Three bites already. Look at that. Beautiful Michigan king salmon at sunrise. Just an absolutely beautiful setting, man. We're gonna put them in the box and get Jim's fish in the boat. Getting our workouts in this morning, Jim. Jim is just locked in to a nice fish. Get him in close and then he wants to go for another run. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go Jim. Fish on. Doubled up, guys. Back on the double, baby. We're gonna shoot the gap here. I'm gonna bring my fish right underneath Jim. He's swimming right at me. There he is, there he is. Small ball pandemonium, baby. Here we go, Jim. Getting Western out here this morning, guys. This fish is passing the boat, guys. Oh my goodness. There he is right there, there he is. There he is. See what we have, nice fish on a plug. Looks like a coho, coho on a plug. Now that is some groceries right there. Okay, here we go. Got him. The world's worst net job, but we got him. <laughs> Okay, there we go guys, check them out. Nice eater king, probably about a eight, 10 pounder, but that is some groceries. And Oliver is just not sure what to think about all this craziness. I got you, I got you. Come here, there we go guys, there we go baby. Oh, diver, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, get that one, get the triple jump. Holy man. <laughs> so first off, I just wanted to express how important it is to take proper care of your catch as soon as your fish comes out of the water. This is incredibly important. Now you've probably heard throughout your life that salmon can be a rather fishy tasting fish. And I'm here to tell you that if this is the case, whoever took care of your catch did not do a proper job. So let's walk through the steps and let's also state that proper preparation prevents 
poor performance. So the first step is, as soon as your catch comes out of the water, as soon as you land your fish, get your fish on ice. Get that fish cold. This is incredibly important. And also, bleed your fish out. Whether that means tying it up to a stringer over the side of the boat or just simply cutting its throat and putting it in the cooler. This is very important, especially if you're fishing for a long period of time. So step one, bleed your fish out. And step two, get your fish cold and get your fish on ice. And I mean a lot of ice. Now I did not bleed this fish out because I want to show you exactly how to properly bleed a fish out. So let's head to the sink. So I like to cut this entire artery here and I will actually cut every single one of this fish's gills on both sides just to ensure that I can get as much blood out of this fish as I can. So I'm gonna come here right where the gill plate meets and I'm gonna cut down right through those gills. As you can see right there in the blood, some blood's already coming out. But when you do this right away, as soon as you catch the fish, it is going to look like a bloodbath here. Now you can see that I cut through every one of this fish's gills and I also cut this main artery right here. And that is the best way to bleed a fish out. Okay, our fish has been bled out here and now this fish has been dead for several hours just for the sake of filming this how-to video. But it is incredibly important that as soon as you guys get off the water, you want to process your fish right away. Now as you can see, this fish has been off ice for about a half hour, hour now, and its skin color is already starting to fade a little bit. And this is very common, this is very typical. You do not want to let your fish sit overnight without properly taking care of it. Okay, so now it is time for the dirty work. Now this is a female salmon, so we're gonna start off by removing her eggs. You can tell this is a female salmon by her flat jaw. You can see her bottom jaw is completely flat. A female will have a flat bottom jaw as a male will start to develop a hook jaw, and especially as we get closer to the fall, when these fish really start to spawn, those males will develop a big, gnarly, hook jaw. And guys, this is just a prime example here. This is just honestly a prime example. You can see all the blood that's created because I didn't bleed this fish out right away because I wanted to show you guys. You can see how big of a mess it's making. Blood is going to be going everywhere when I clean this fish and this is why it is incredibly important to bleed your fish out here. And it also greatly helps your meat and it also greatly helps your eggs, which we're going to remove the eggs out of this fish first to use for bait. So I'm gonna run my knife right below her anal fin here and I'm just gonna make an incision just below the skin all the way up to the gill here. You do not wanna puncture and pierce the skin too deep because you're gonna be end up cutting your eggs. Now obviously, if you're not worried about saving your eggs for bait, it doesn't matter. But if you're a river junkie like I am, this is pure gold. Now you can see here that these eggs are full of blood. You can see the blood all throughout her membrane. But when this fish is bled out, as soon as you catch her, there will be no blood. These eggs will be bright orange and just absolute beautiful berries. And as well as the eggs, the meat will be the same thing as well. And now we're gonna use this to catch salmon in the river here in about a month. So let's flip her around and let's get to chopping. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is something we call slabbing. We're gonna take the side we're gonna take the flays right off this fish. Now when you're flaying these big salmon or trout like this, I typically like to have a 10 inch knife. This is only about a seven inch knife. It's a little shorter, it's all I have right now and I'm gonna make it work. But if you're just starting off, a 10 inch knife is really gonna help you get accustomed to the process here. So I'm gonna start off here guys by running my knife straight down right below its gill plate. You can see its gill plate runs right where my index finger is and I'm gonna cut on an angle straight down all the way till its backbone. And you're gonna feel it hit its backbone. So right there, I made a cut down all the way to the bone and now I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna run my knife even right along the backbone and whack that whole side off. And also, as I whack the side off of this fish, and as I proceed down through its body with my knife, I like to keep this knife angled down just a little bit so I scrape that backbone all the way down. That way I'm ensuring I'm getting all the meat off this fish that I can get. So I'm gonna start here, guys. And you can see how easy this is. This is a very sharp knife. And that knife just glides right off the tail, and bam, just like that. Let's flip it over. And that is just an absolutely beautiful king salmon filet that's going to be delicious here in about a half hour. My stomach's already grumbling. 
Okay, so now we come to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Run my knife right along that backbone. We're gonna flip this filet over and another beautiful king salmon filet. Okay, so you can see the rib bones start right where my index finger is here, and they run all the way down through here. You'll be able to feel them with your fingers. So what I'm gonna do with my knife is I'm gonna make a little incision just behind those bones, just like so, and I'm gonna run my knife as close to those bones as I can, and I'm just gonna shave that whole bone strip right off. As I run my knife down, I'm gonna make sure my knife is just grazing right underneath those bones. That way I'm not cutting into the flay. And now check this out here. Now you just wanna go slow. If you're just starting, if you've never done this before, just go really slow. There's no rush. As you can see, I'm just peeling back those rib bones a little bit at a time. And now I'm down towards the belly meat. So I'm gonna cut a nice even strip there. And I have all those pin bones out. That looks actually perfect there, guys. And uh, that's good to go. We now have our rib bones out. And now we're gonna move to our pin bones, which is right here. And I'm gonna show you how to remove those pin bones. So before I take the pin bones out here, what I like to do is remove this tail piece. This tail piece is completely bone free. And now I'll take my knife and cut all the way down to the skin, right about where the butt's at on the fish. You can see the filet makes a corner here. That's right where the butt was at. I'm gonna cut straight down, and that's also right where the pin bone line starts. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so you guys can see here. I'm gonna come up. Now, right where my finger's at, that's where the pin bone line starts, and that runs all the way to the top of the filet here. You'll be able to feel it with your finger. So, I'm gonna take my knife right where that pin bone line stops, and that's right about where the butt's at on the fish, and I'm gonna cut straight down all the way to the skin. I'm not gonna cut through the skin though. I'm gonna cut all the way straight down to the skin as you can see right there. And now I'm gonna shave this whole tail piece off. So I'm gonna take my knife here guys. I'm gonna make sure I got a nice clean edge and I'm just gonna go slow and I'm keeping my knife angled down just a little bit. And as I go down, I'm gonna shave that whole tail piece off. And that is a perfect boneless piece of meat. We're gonna to touch this up a little bit. I'm gonna remove some of this mud vein. This is the very fishy tasting part of the fish here. If you keep a lot of this brown meat on, that's where the fishy flavor is gonna come from. I personally like to remove as much of this brown meat as I can. I like a nice clean filet. I like nice clean fish. I eat a lot of fish, therefore I like to ensure there is as least fishy taste as possible here. So I'm gonna flip this filet around here guys, and now we're gonna remove the pin bone. You can see this pin bone line here. You'll be able to feel it with your fingers. It runs all the way down to the end of the flay, right where I made that incision for my tail piece. And now we're gonna take the pin bone line out. Okay, so now I'm going to remove these pin bones here. I'm gonna press down on this flay so you can see how these pin bones stick just out of the flay here. You'll be able to feel them with the tip of your finger. And now these pin bones run on a little bit of an angle, just how my hand is shaped here. So as I cut down, I'm gonna show you how I like to remove this top piece of meat. There's a big strip of meat here right where my fingers are running and I call that the back strap of the salmon here. And we're gonna remove that whole boneless piece of back strap. So I'm gonna push down one more time so you guys can really see those pin bones. And like I said, they run on an angle similar to how my hand is. So I'm gonna start off by coming on the top side of these pin bones. I'm gonna come just on the top side of these pin bones here and I'm gonna shave off this whole back strap piece of meat here. So the first step is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna make an incision. I'm just gonna cut just barely into the filet. I don't wanna cut down too far because you will feel those bones. As you make this incision, you will feel those bones. You'll feel your knife running on the edge of those bones there. Then I'm gonna use my hand just to kind of open up the gap a little bit so I can see what I'm working with and you'll be able to feel those bones with your finger. And now you can really get to see how those pin bones run. Right there, you can see those pin bones just dig in just a little bit and they curve towards the top of the flay here. And so now guys, I'm just gonna simply run my knife right along those pin bones there. I'm keeping my knife running just along those pin bones, that way I'm not wasting any meat at all, and I'm just gonna shave off this back strap. And now you can see, I just gently made an incision and I'm all the way down to the skin there, guys. So you can see my finger is all the way down to the skin, and that is absolutely perfect. You can see the pin bones are right here, and now I'm just gonna shave off this whole back strap piece now with my knife.
And now, like I said, I like to angle my knife down because I'm running my knife right along the edge of the skin there. So I'm running my knife down to the skin and then I'm pushing forward. So I'm coming down and I'm pushing forward and I'm coming down and pushing forward. That way I remove this whole back strap upper salmon loin right off the skin of that fish and that is going to be a totally clean and boneless piece of salmon backstrap baby okay so next step here our bones are still in the fish and as you can probably guess i'm just going to do it to the other side now i'm going to take my knife i'm going to make a slight incision just barely into the meat right behind those bones as close as i can get to them that way i'm going to be able to get as much meat as I possibly can, and I'm not going to waste any meat here. So I made that slight incision. You can really start to see those bones popping out. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna run it on an angle, kind of pushing down in, and I'm gonna run it just on the back side of those bones here. So I'm coming down, I'm gonna do one more, I have my knife running just like this. That way I'm feathering it and I'm shaving just behind those bones. I'm using my fingers after each slice. That way I can just peel those bones apart. And now you can see guys right there is a nice bone strip and there is like hardly any wasted meat here. I mean, look at this, there's like nothing. If you really wanted to get technical with it, you know, you could, I don't know, use a fork and chop up some of that meat in between the bones and grind it into burger. I really don't know, but I mean, look at that. There's like hardly any wasted meat there. And this is just such an important step to really be able to enjoy your fish because nobody likes to eat bones while they're trying to enjoy their fish. Okay, so now this whole bottom piece here is completely bone free. So I'm gonna flip this flay over and now we're just gonna shave off this whole bottom piece. I'm gonna cut down to the skin about halfway through. That way we're gonna have two nice salmon steaks there. I'm gonna separate this skin. I'm gonna use my knife and I'm just gonna shave it close to the skin. And this is gonna give us two beautiful salmon steaks here that are completely bone free. Now you can see I flipped to this other side and you can see there's still some mud vein on the back side of this flay here. And I'm gonna remove this mud vein. I like to remove as much of this mud vein as I possibly can. So I'm just gonna take my knife and just gently shave this mud vein off here. And you can see I peel it back take it off i'm going to come in a little bit just pop that mud vein right out of there guys and like i said depending on your taste some people like kind of that more fishy taste but me personally i don't like it at all so i'm going to take off all that brown piece you can see there's not a single chunk of brown meat on that fish it is completely boneless and completely clean and ready to go into the oven Okay, so our last piece of meat that we have to clean up here is our tail section. Now you can see there's two parts to this tail section here. You can see there's a mud vein that runs right down the center of this fish here. And now I'm gonna cut this out. So what I like to do here, guys, is I'm gonna cut on each side of this vein here. I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna run my fingers right there, right down the middle, and I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna go slow, that way I don't cut myself, and I'm just gonna come straight down and cut all the way down. Okay, I got one piece there, and now I'm going to come over, and I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, now that's another big heavy mud vein, and like I said, that's another part of the fish, just like we cut out in the last section, that's really fishy tasting. Okay, so I'm going to flip these two pieces over, and now you can see there's still a nice big thick mud vein on this flay here. So I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to find the right angle, I'm going to take my knife, and I'm just going to gently shave right underneath this mud vein here. Now having a nice sharp knife is crucial for having a nice finished product and a nice finished flay here. So I'm just going to shave that mud vein right off. And that is perfect there guys. I got the majority off. Maybe touch up a couple more little pieces there. You can get as detailed as you really want. And that is going to be some delicious bone free clean salmon meat. Okay, so let's take a look here. I'm gonna hold up the different cuts of meat that we just finally processed here. Okay, so we have our two tail pieces. This is two tail pieces, one off each flay. We have these two tail pieces, and then we have our other two, just absolutely perfect, bone free, all the mud veins taken off, and that's gonna be a delicious cut of meat. We come to our bottom steaks here. I'm gonna take these two steaks. There's two steaks on each flay, so we have four total. You can see, nice and clean, no mud vein on the back. Nice and clean, no mud vein, no bones. And then we're gonna come to our back straps. 
We have two back straps, one off each flay, no bones, no mud vein. This is a total game changer for being able to really enjoy your own fresh fish. It takes away all the fishy taste and it really just makes it so much enjoyable because really nobody likes to chew through bones as they're trying to enjoy their dinner here. So do this if you're not doing it. If you go on a charter, offer to pay your charter captain extra. A lot of them will do it, a lot of them won't do it, but this just makes such a big difference to really be able to enjoy your own fresh catch here. So now we're gonna take a couple of our uh, steaks and get to cooking. I'm hungry, man. I'm really hungry. Okay, so now it is time to get to cooking. I'm hungry and we're gonna be getting a little bit wild tonight. We're gonna try a new recipe that I've just been kind of coming up with in my head. We're gonna do a baked mayo salmon recipe with sour cream and onion chips chopped up and used as a breading on top and see how it turns out. If you guys have followed this channel for a while, you've seen that I like to cook salmon many different ways, but tonight we're gonna see if we can learn a new recipe together. Okay, so here goes nothing. We're gonna take two steaks. I'm gonna take some olive oil here, guys. I'm gonna lather each side of this filet with a little bit of olive oil, kind of rub it in, rub it on both sides. Get it nice and soaked in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Okay, now we have it oiled up. We're gonna add our mayonnaise here. So I'm gonna take these pieces, I'm gonna push them up together. I'm gonna take out some mayonnaise. Get a nice, healthy serving of mayonnaise there, and I'm gonna lather the whole top of these steaks with mayonnaise. Okay, so now this is where things start to get Western here. I'm gonna take these sour cream and onion chips, put them in a bag, I'm gonna seal it up, and then I'm gonna crush up these chips so it's a nice, fine breading. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the sour cream and onion breading and just put a nice layer on top and this is gonna crisp up. In theory, it's gonna crisp up. I guess we'll find out together what really happens, but man, I really don't know. I don't know how this could be bad. I'm actually really excited to try this. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty darn good. And now the last step, I'm just gonna add a layer of sea salt on top of each flay here. A little pepper. All right, and we are now in business. And in we go. Oh my gosh, this actually looks delicious. Look at the breading. Look at how nice and crispy it is on top of the fish, on top of the mayonnaise. I am really excited to try this. <laughs> Look at that salmon steak, guys. That looks so delicious, I cannot wait to try this. Don't know how this is gonna turn out to be honest, but you know what, we're gonna give it a try and no risk, no reward. Okay, well here goes nothing. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be brutally honest. That is actually really good. It is really good. Mmm. I love the crust. I love the crunchy, crispy breading on top. And that sour cream and onion just mixes well with the fish and with the mayonnaise. It's honestly a great combo, I think. I would definitely say this would be worth a try sometime. And I will be making this again. This is... Oh God, man. <laughs> oh God, man. <laughs> I sure am glad I made two steaks because I'm going to smash both of these. I actually think this is excellent. It might not be for everybody, but I think it's very, very good. I will definitely be making it again, and I definitely would say it would be worth you guys trying it as well. But without further ado, I think that's all I have for you guys this week. And I also hope you use the information that I shared with you to help you enjoy your own fresh catch a little bit more as well. Stay tuned for next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the free charter fish that I'm gonna give away with myself personally for salmon fishing on the river this fall. I'll be giving it away. All you have to do to enter to win is like, 
like, subscribe, and comment on these videos down below here, and you could win this exciting fishing trip. But without further ado, we will see you guys back here next Sunday at 5 p.m. in our next episode. Until next time, good luck to everybody on the water, and fish on, baby.